Hi everyone, welcome to Mr. Carlson's shop and some more stories of my past. So this story is uh, actually somewhat scary just because of what I'm holding right now. And I never got rid of this blade just because of this. So it has a nice big ding in it too. So I straightened it out because I did actually end up using this in an active fan after this little incident happened with this. I guess uh, me and this blade got a little bit closer and uh, well, at one point a little too close, I guess you could say. So when I was a lot younger, uh, you know, of course I was a little bit more daring and things like that. I maybe, I don't know, maybe I still am daring. You know, according to some people, I'm, I'm actually quite daring still. But at any rate, so when I was much younger, I, I liked to repair small engines. So uh, I liked to build, I, I actually really liked antique engines. I liked the old Clintons and uh, the old Max, the old McCulloughs. And um, I don't know, some of you might even remember Lawson Tecumseh. I remember those engines quite nicely. They had a really nice little oil pump in them. Really high quality motors for way back when, you know. At any rate, so I liked working with these small engines and I built go-karts and I did all sorts of things when I was younger, right? I was welding in my teens. I was pretty a pretty decent arc welder in my teens. So I would work in the basement of our house at the time. And the basement had one big bay door. And the problem was is, you know, when you're working with gasoline and things like that, you know, and, you know, oil and different chemicals, WD-40, whatever, you know, it gets, uh, I guess you could say in, the, in a small enclosed area, it gets uh, pretty stinky, you know, like, I mean, there's uh, quite a few fumes from all this kind of stuff in there, right? So I wanted to put up a fan in that area that would very quickly I guess you could say evacuate or get rid of all of the air, pull new stuff in and, and, and get rid of the, uh, you know, the fumes and all that kind of stuff. So I built this really neat bracket that hung from the joists because the ceiling wasn't finished. So, so the, the, this thing hung from the joists and it was kind of like a, I guess you could say like a U made out of wood. And there was a, a, a large fan motor in there, like what you'd find in your furnace, quarter horsepower, third horsepower kind of uh, a motor, just a standard regular induction type motor, right? And uh, this thing was mounted on it, all right, off to the side. So, so I'd found a whole bunch of different motors in the past, you know, because, you know, when you're young, you're just looking for motors that are going to basically have enough power to spin this thing, because when this starts to spin, it actually creates quite a bit of, you know, there's quite a bit of drag. It's trying to move a lot of air, right? So the first motor or two that I had tried with this fan blade, I'll just put it down here. Big fan blade makes a lot of noise. Yeah, sorry about that. So at any rate, uh, when I first tried to move the actual fan, the motors would get really hot after a very short period of time because it didn't have enough, you know, power to move these things and to just, you know, keep them going. So the motor itself, the fan was actually cooling the motor. And uh, I didn't like how hot the motors were getting. That was probably fine for the motor at the time. You know, you could put your hands on it, but you know, it was getting pretty toasty. So I was looking for a motor that would be a little bit better, you know, that would turn it and not get so warm. So I came across this, you know, relatively large induction motor capacitor start on the top, big old cap on there. And and I figured, hey, this, is, this might work. This might actually spin this up pretty good. So what I did is, I, of course, I removed the fan blade. Of course, when I was younger, this was all exposed off in the corner of the garage too. Like, you know, you could walk into this. <laughs> so when I was young, a little bit more daring and uh, there's no way that you wouldn't know that it's running. So I wasn't worried about it because when that's running, it made a lot of noise. Did a lot of crazy things when I was young. <clears throat> so I wanted to see if this, this motor would spin this thing up properly. So I attempted to remove this thing from the shaft and I put this on this new motor and I fastened the motor to the bench. So, you know, me being behind the motor, fan blade about here, okay, I'm behind the motor and it's fastened to the bench. So I'm not really too concerned about it. And, uh, you know, it's tightened onto the shaft and everything. So I start the, the, the motor up and the fan woo, goes right up and then all of a sudden, boom, like that fast, this fan, boom, right past my face, hit the ceiling, hit the floor, ceiling, floor, ceiling, floor, ceiling, floor, ceiling, floor, and ended out in the driveway because the door was open at that time. At that point, you know, I'm basically white thinking of this and 
we were going to go out, me and the family were going to go out for dinner that night, and I just shut everything down, I shut the doors and everything, <laughs> and I guess you could say I reflected upon that through dinner, how incredibly um, close that came to just, if that would have hit me anywhere, it would have just sliced me right open. Like it would have, that, this thing at that speed would have probably, well, I don't even want to say it, you know what that would have done. Okay, so, so when I got home, I inspected it, and what had happened, what are, the, what are the chances? The shaft of the motor that this was put onto had one piece of shaft that was threaded into the other piece of shaft, and they were perfectly aligned. The keyway was perfectly aligned. The motor ran backwards to the way that the end shaft was threaded in. So as soon as it started and got any force going, that end shaft unthreaded out of the motor and left and hit the ceiling and the floor and the ceiling and the floor. So when I got the fan blade and inspected it, of course the piece of shaft is still tight in there and you could see the piece of shaft stick out with the thread on it. So what are the chances of that? an actual threaded piece of shaft that's, you know, and of course the motor is spinning in the opposite direction, being capacitor start, that's easy to do with reversing the wires and things like that, right? So just another, you know, crazy, crazy thing that happened to me when I was younger. And I look at back to these things now and how close this was. If you just watched my last video about my, where I got electrocuted and I shouldn't say electrocuted, I got shocked because uh, we all know what electrocution means, but I got shocked really bad and it uh, burned a hole in my hand. So that's one, the other story that I just recently had. If, if you haven't seen that, just check my videos list, you'll find it. Uh, you know, I look at this and, you know, same kind of deal. I, I came extremely close that day to uh, being in the ER, if I even made it there. And, you know, you think to yourself when you're young, you take all of these chances and like, you know, what are the chances of something like that actually happening? I've had so many small motors. I, I was, I had lots of small motors. I was fascinated with them uh, when I was younger. I, you know, I had little quarter horse powered, you know, Delco motors out of dryers, I had British Thompson Houston's, uh, uh, tamper motors. I had all sorts of different types of motors and, you know, I was, you know, fascinated with them when I was, was younger. And, well, still kind of am, you know, I, I'm fascinated with anything that, that has electricity in it, right? You know, so. And what are the chances? I've never, ever come across another motor like that. So, uh, just very, very strange situation. So, that really woke me up. So, fan guard after that and, you know, all sorts of crazy stuff. And um, I was, you know, a lot more careful. And it's unfortunate, like, I mean, that something like that has to happen to, to bring you to that point but um, maybe a little bit too daring or a little bit too bold when I was young. And uh, you know, this, that was a, a massive wake up call. I, and, and I can tell you when I was sitting there at dinner that night, we went out for dinner to a, a local restaurant. I was just sitting there just thinking about that, how close that was. You know, after you see that, you get the dry mouth, you know, you're white after you see that, right? You just get the dry mouth and that horrible feeling of just, wow. I can't explain it, what it sounds like when something like this flies past your head freely. Woof. It's just like that. And it, as it hit the ceiling, you know, just, it was a wooden ceiling, so it was, you know, donk, you know, tang against the concrete floor, donk, ting, donk, ting. And it just kind of, you know, like a spring all the way outside. And it's just, you know, that I, you know unless you're there, you really can't feel that moment. But um, I'm sure, uh, I'm hoping I'm painting enough of a picture for you to, uh, to, let you know what that is. So if you're ever working with one of these fans, definitely make sure it's in a cage, uh, a really good cage, because if that blade comes off, wow. The old metal fans that you could buy that were, you know, in the early 1900s, they all had exposed blades. It was just the way it was, you know, and uh, you were expected to know, don't stick your finger in there, you know, because if you did, obviously you know what would happen. And uh, they were all like that way back when. And then they started to put fan guards on them, but what good were the fan guards when they're, you know, the the uh, the actual uh, cover on it had circles on it that was this far apart. You can still stick a hand in there or something, right? <clears throat> so, you know, yeah, just uh, different times, different times. So, um, yeah, they, you know, we've come better into safety and now I'm, you know, 
as I say, extremely safe with things. And that's why, again, on my channel, I warn everybody about everything all the time. I'm very keen on safety because I've had so many close calls myself. And to do with cars as well. I have a very interesting car story that will blow your mind. Uh, and that will be most likely the next video, the shop video here. Uh, the car that I normally have in here is out of here right now, so I'm doing this video in here. Maybe I'll talk a little bit about that then as well. Meanwhile, in Mr. Carlson's backyard. So I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you enjoyed this shop talk video, and uh, be safe out there. If you're new to this channel and you're all about electronics, check out my Patreon page. I have an electronics course there where I share my inventions and designs. So uh, check that out as well, and of course that supports the channel, keeps everything here going, and uh, you also, in return, get a great electronics course and get projects to build and a lot of videos to view. 170 or so videos on there right now all teaching about electronics. Anyways, hope you enjoyed. I'll put the link just below the video's description under the Show More tab, and I'll pin it as well so you can click on it if you want to check that out. All right, stay safe. Bye for now.